So in the last video, we had completed our back arrow handler, which handles the reverse animation, and this login view closes nicely. Now what we want to do is, when we tap the text input, and once the screen is opened up, we want to focus the text input. But as of now, all our animations are happening on the native UI thread. It has no knowledge of our JavaScript thread. That means we need to have a way to call back into our JavaScript thread in order to focus our text input. So first, we need to have a reference to our text input. Let's go ahead and create that. Here on top, below our scale animation, let's create a new constant and let's call that text input ref. We'll use ref and set that initially to null. Now jump to our text input and let's pass the ref in here. So we'll say ref, text input ref. Now in our use code block, where we set is open dot current to one, let's wrap this in a block and let's open that up. So after we set is open to one, here we need to call back into the JavaScript thread by using this call method, which is available to us from reanimated. Inside that, the first parameter takes any properties that we want to pass back from the native UI thread to our JavaScript thread, which in our case is nothing. And the second parameter takes the method that we want to call on the JavaScript thread. So let's call that focus text input. And let's go ahead and set that up. So here we'll say const focus text input. Inside this, we'd focus the text input by saying text input ref dot current and then call the focus method. Let's save that. Let's reload the app. Now when we tap the text input, we see it opens up and it focuses. Obviously we haven't enabled the keyboard right now. So I'm just going to do that. Close this out and reload the app. When we tap that, we see the text input opens up as the animation appears. But obviously we want this to open up only once the animation is complete. So we technically need to add a sort of a delay before this focus text input is called. We could do that here on our JavaScript thread, but let's try and do it on our native UI thread. So what we'll do is we'll pull out this call and turn this use code method into a block. So let's just wrap it into a block. Let's pull the dependencies out here and let's save that. Next, outside our condition, let's put in a new condition which checks if is open dot current is set to one. Then we'll use a method called delay which is available to us from React Native Redash. Inside this, the first parameter is the node that we want to animate. So here we'll pass in the call method, which calls focus text input. And the second parameter is the delay that we want to add. So here let's add a delay of half a second. Let's save that out. Let's reload the app. And now let's try this. I think we could delay it slightly more. And let's reload the app now. And that looks much better. So now we have the text input getting focused once the animation is complete and the keyboard shows up. Similarly, we also need to hide the keyboard when we press the back button and then run the reverse animation. So here in our back arrow gesture state, we'll first call back to the JavaScript thread and then we'll delay setting is open current to zero. So here let's call the JavaScript thread by using call, pass in another method called blur text input. We have to just set that up and then we'll pass in a delay here of 250, which is approximately what it takes for the keyboard to get hidden and then animate this back down. Now let's go ahead and set up this method. Let's say blur text input. Inside this, we've got text input ref dot current dot blur. Let's save that out. Let's reload the app. We see that the keyboard nicely shows up. Pressing the back button, the keyboard nicely slides back down. Let's try that again. And it seems we have a small issue here because when we open the animation again, the keyboard seems to appear before the animation is complete. It seems like I slightly over-engineered here. 
we didn't really need to wrap this into a block and do all of this. We actually need to move this condition inside the gesture state because we only want it to run when the gesture state ends. Otherwise, it detects it before it ends and it starts that animation. Let's save that. Let's reload the app. Now let's tap this. The keyboard shows up. If you press the back arrow, it goes down nicely. Try that again. And it seems to be working as expected. So here we actually can just get out of this block and everything should still work. And that's about right. Now the last part that's left is to actually show that arrow which comes up once the keyboard appears. For that, we need to get the height of the keyboard. That unfortunately cannot be done on the native UI thread and we have to do it on the JavaScript side. So first let's go ahead and set up the listeners for the keyboard showing and hiding. So let's come up here and set up our use effect methods right on top. Usually we do it in the componented mount. So here we'll use our use effect hook. So let's say use effect. Inside this, we need keyboard from React Native. Next, we need to add listener, which is keyboard did show, which we'll call the keyboard did show method, which we'll set up. Then we need to add the keyboard did hide listener. So we'll say keyboard add listener, keyboard did hide, and that will point to keyboard did hide. Then we need to clean these listeners up. We'll pass in a return function. You don't really need to name it, but we'll just call it clean up. We'll say keyboard dot remove listener. And let's just remove all listeners, in fact. Let's go ahead and set up these two methods. So above our blur text input, let's say const keyboard did show. And let's also pass in keyboard did hide. See here, we basically need to run the animation that will animate our particular view up. Before that, let's go ahead and set up that forward arrow. So I'm just going to save that. Make sure that all the errors have gone away. Let's open our sidebar, go into the components folder, create a forward arrow, .js. I'm just going to call that forward arrow. Let's get rid of this view from here and let's pass in an animated dot view. And inside this, we need to pass in an icon. So let's just import in Ionicons as icon from at expo forward slash vector icons. Let's pass in the icon. The name is going to be MD arrow forward. And let's just give it a color of white. To style the parent, we'll say style. Style store forward arrow. Get rid of this. Let's pass in forward arrow here. I'm just going to copy in some styles because they're pretty similar to our back arrow. So basically, it has a position of absolute, a height of 60, it's positioned right at the bottom here, and we're going to animate the opacity and the transform value. So we'll pull this out and put these values here. Make sure, as always, to spread this out, which I always forget. Here we'll pass in opacity, set that to 1 for now. We'll pass in a transform, which is going to be a translate y which is going to be zero to begin with. Now let's head back to app.js. And actually there's a bit of an issue. Instead of removing all listeners, we'll have to remove the listeners separately. Otherwise we tend to get this error which says event type argument is required. So I'm just quickly going to do that. And we shouldn't be getting that error any longer. Now let's come to our overlay BG. Since that was also absolutely positioned inside this out of view, we can just pass in our forward arrow here. And let's save that out. Now when we open this up, we should see it here, but we don't. That's because if you remember, this particular view is not moving right till the top. It's moving till login view height divided by two. So that means for the forward arrow, we need to pass in a bottom position equivalent to that. Make sure that you import in login view height from the constants file in your forward arrow and let's save that out. Now if we reload this, if we tap this, we see that icon has come there at the bottom. 
Now all we need to do is just move it up here. So back to app.js. Let's head to the keyboard did show. Here we need to make sure to get the keyboard height. So along with the method, we get the keyboard properties, which we saved in this E variable. Here, all we need to do is let's store that by saying let to value equal to E dot n coordinates dot height to get the height of the keyboard. But since we need to move that icon vertically up, which is negative, we'll pass in a negative value here. And then let us animate this by saying animated dot timing. We need to animate an animated value, which we should set up. Let's call that keyboard height. So come up here. Let us declare that say const keyboard height is equal to new animated dot value of zero. Let's save that back to our keyboard did show method. So we'll animate the keyboard height. The two value is going to be the two value that we passed in. So we can just pass in a comma here. The next is the duration, which is the duration at which the keyboard shows, which is going to be 250 milliseconds. We're going to pass in an easing, which is easing, which we need to import from react native reanimated dot linear. And we also want to use the native driver. Set that to true. Then make sure to start the animation. And let's pass this particular value to our forward arrow. So we'll say forward arrow. Here, let's just directly pass in the keyboard height. And we can pass in the keyboard height. In the forward arrow component, let's replace this translate Y with the keyboard height. And let's pull that in here. Let's save that. And let's reload that. And we see that it moves up nicely. Now, depending on the keyboard height, let's just interpolate our opacity. See here, I'm just going to add in curly braces, pass in a return statement. Let's create a new value called opacity. We'll say interpolate. Interpolate over the keyboard height. Input range is going to be from zero to keyboard height. And the output range is going to be zero to one. So let's save that. And let's pass in the opacity here by just removing the one. Let's reload the app. And there we get the arrow. Let's quickly finish up the reverse animation by going to the keyboard did hide. And here we can just say animated.timing. Again, keyboard height needs to be moved to zero here. And all the parameters are the same. Let's save that. Let's reload the app. Let's test that out. It comes in nicely and it goes away as well. So that completes our Uber login animation. I hope you guys like this. There was a lot to learn from this and I hope you guys try this out.